all expenses had been paid, except payments that I made from my own office account for air tickets with Max Air. If you recall, we had problem with Asman. We had to move to Max. I paid from my office 6.5 or 6 million naira for air tickets. I also paid another 3. Point about 4 million naira or thereabout. The, the receipts are there. For this whole thing is about money. And this money, like you and I know, is the bar practicing fee that all of you here contribute to our common posts. Please permit me. I am not discountenancing what the 19th president came to do. But it is very important. We live in a time and age where when things like this happen, it is important for you to hear from me too. And then whatever decisions that will be taken subsequently is another thing altogether. And just like the saying goes, you do not go to the market square and undress me. And the 19th president of the Nigerian Bar Association, our learned seniors and colleagues, please permit me. I am not discountenancing what the 19th president came to do, but it is very important. We live in a time and age where when things like this happen, it is important for you to hear from me too. And then whatever decisions that will be taken subsequently is another thing altogether. And just like the saying goes, you do not go to the market square and undress me. And with due respect, sir, we go back to a committee where they will come and uh, listen to me and wear a very fine abada after everybody has seen my nakedness. It doesn't work like that. And let me say for avoidance of any doubt. That number one, and I've said this severally, I am a product of the grace of God. If you are one, it's up to you to say it, but I'm making my own personal declaration. And I know where I am coming from. That I am the president of the Nigerian Bar Association today is only the function of God Almighty and no more. So I am conscious of my responsibility. I am conscious of my commitment to each and every one of you here as president of the Nigerian Bar Association. Take it or leave it. This whole thing is about money. And this money, like you and I know, is the bar practicing fee that all of you here contribute to our common posts. And I said that we have to be frugal in the spending of our money. Because I come from a village and I know the trouble that some of our colleagues face to pay bar practicing fees once every year. There are some of our colleagues here who are in big cities practicing that can attest to the fact that some of their colleagues that are practicing in remote areas cannot pay 25,000 Naira once every year conveniently. They have to call them and ask for assistance. That is the only means by which we fund the activities of the Nigerian Bar Association. When I assumed office as the president of the bar, I didn't have money kept anywhere. But I appreciate that singular honor that all of you have done to me. Of all of us, you decided that you would put that responsibility and trust on me as your president. God Almighty is my witness. You can check my accounts. I, I don't have money kept anywhere by which I am running myself in this office. But one thing I am confident, there is nothing that I have ever required, ever needed, that God has not supplied for me. So I took on the responsibility, I took on the responsibility to call for our retreat of the national officers. At the risk of sounding immodest, I don't like saying this, but because we are in a situation where I have to say it, I funded that retreat a hundred percent. I paid all their tickets. I paid the upper dam for the number of days they stayed. They stayed. We, had, we were already sworn in. We could have resorted to the funds of the Nigerian Bar Association. I paid all for those that traveled. I paid their tickets. For the resource persons, I paid their tickets. For, for their hotel accommodations, I paid. For our feeding during that period, I paid every single dime. For us to have an opportunity to interact very closely so that we can have the necessary bonding to be able to serve you better. 
That is because I appreciate where I'm coming from and I know the difficulties that most of us face to pay back participation fee. Go and check the records. When I travel, when I travel with my aides, Laura Alakita, China Jerem Uwaubani, Obasi, Uwabweze, Augustine Eze, I pay for their fare. The Nigerian Bar Association has never paid for their travel fares, even when they go to serve you with me. Never. Even the director of protocols, Kazim, Kazim Nasir, who works for the Nigerian Bar Association, he can attest to the fact that we have traveled and I pay for his travel tickets. I've never stayed in any hotel anywhere doing the job of the Nigerian Bar Association using your funds. Is it out of abundance? No. But I must show appreciation to you. I am the only person who can stand out today and introduce myself as the president of the Nigerian Bar Association. No one else can. Even that gentleman, uh, Wale Fabonda, that tries to. He cannot say so. And I go to places I am accorded respect by reason of the privilege that you have given to me to serve. How much could I have paid you to do that? So, the straw that broke the camel's back was in January this year. And I will tell my colleagues, you are the treasurer. You are the only person who can announce yourself as the treasurer. You are the first vice, you are the second vice, you are the third vice. Of all of us, none of you, no matter how unhappy you are with us, you can't go out and say you are any of us. That is a privilege for which we can't pay. That has been my message to all of us, and they can attest to it. And I said, let us use this opportunity to serve the association. That will be our seed. The MBA is a good ground. Let us commit our time and our resources to serve our members that have done us the honor to serve them. And our own harvest shall come in the future. Don't come here with the mentality of targeting bar practicing fee. If that is your target, I will not allow you to spend it. And so, in January this year, we convened a national dialogue. It was on the 30th of January. We paid for the fears of national officers coming out of Abuja to come for the national dialogue. We had a press briefing on the 31st. So everybody was supposed to go back on the 1st. This is not, if you're an elected national officer, you don't leave off the association. Go and do your work. When you are needed, you come and serve the association. Voluntary non-fit injury, you are the one that signed on. So don't complain that you don't have time for your work. And some of the national officers, including the third vice, stayed here for two weeks in hotel, paid from your bar practicing fee, fed by your bar practicing fee, and also giving per day 30,000 naira every day for the period that she stayed behind and wanted me to pay. I said, I will not pay. I will not pay. This issue came up at our neck in Kebi. The memo is there. The memo is there. What explanation do you have to stay after the press briefing on the 31st until about the 14th of February? What did I see in the explanatory note? Meeting with the president on the 1st. On the 6th, the president's birthday. I said, me? Yes, that is my birthday. So you, you are staying to do my birthday on MBA? I said, no. Do I even sometimes remember when my birthday is? And I met with the president. It's a lie. We didn't have any meeting. You simply will walk into my office and say, Mr. President, do you have any work for me? I say, I don't have. Oh, you are still here? I am here. I had already warned them the previous year that please, when you come, if we have anything on a particular day, take the first flight, come that day, you spend that night, the following day we finish, you take the last flight and go. But she stayed two weeks. She wasn't alone. And I looked at it and I said I would not pay. Because it's your money. It's our own commonwealth. It's our own commonwealth. I would not spend that money like that. You cannot tell me what would you have said if you had seen it in the statement of account that a third vice stayed two weeks to attend my birthday? What would you say of me? And then, talking about section 95, the third vice president sent me a message that she wants to go on a familiarization tour 
of the zone assigned to her, which is the West. I later discovered that, as at the time that message was sent to me, she had gone, already gone, on the familiarization tour, carrying five people from her office to accompany her as third vice president. And you are to pay. Familiarization? Is that what section 9, subsection 5 says? That you want to go to familiarize yourself with the zone that you are sent to, to work? When you went around campaigning, did you not familiarize, familiarize yourself enough? You now want to use MBA money to carry your own colleagues, feed them, transport them, house them, and you say we should also give them stipends for accompanying you third vice president to go on a familiarization tour. The memo is in the office. The details are clearly stated there. If you want, you can come to the office. You are a member of the house. We will divulge that information to you. I refuse to pay. That bill came to about two point something million naira. Your own money. I said I will not pay. I said I will not pay. And the same thing with any other person. And then, you know, sometimes I, I, I talk about the Holy Spirit and my colleagues. Yesterday I called China Cherem. I said, I have a very strong feeling that I may have to respond to this issue with the second vice president. That I have not been given him assignment. You know, the Nigerian Bar Association is bigger than all of us. Honestly, I would have kept quiet. I would have walked away, giving you the impression that I'm a bad person. But because of the Nigerian Bar Association, I will not bother because it's bigger than all of us. And I'm the only person who is president today who must bring accountability from the point of view of a president, not second president, vice president. If that is what I wanted to contest for, I would have waited until the time when I'm eligible to contest for second vice president. And the second vice president is not the president. It's not the president. The third vice president is not the president. As, as the risk of sounding immodest, the constitution tells you who you are and what you can do. Have I been delegating assignment to the second vice president? It, it's a pity that we will ignore the things that we know have been done and come here and misrepresent facts just because you want to put this boy at odds with his colleagues. It is unfortunate. All the reports that Clement Chikwe Meta, Democrat, rendered that he did this, he did that. It was at my instance. It, wait, it was at my instance. The forensic report, paper he delivered, this was a memo I minuted to him on the 29th of March, 2023. 20th April, 2023. 10th May, 2023. 8th May, 2023. 9th May, 2023, 25th April, 2023, 31st, 31st May, 2023, 28th July, 2023. Some of the reports he submitted to me, some that I could just bring out. See a report by Chukwu Emeka that said I didn't, I was not engaging him. See a report that he submitted, another report that he submitted another report. Is it honorable for us to come and make such representations before our colleagues to say that I have never given you any assignment? It is certainly not true. It is certainly not true. It is not true. And I keep, I keep preaching. And, and if you know the Nigerian Bar Association very well, the president is the only person that is authorized to speak for the Nigerian Bar Association. The second vice and the third vice have made the habit of going to take a position on the Nigerian Bar Association. And I've spoken to them severally. My colleagues here are my witness. This was something that was talked about very clearly during our retreat. And we had cause to bring up these issues during our next meetings. And our colleagues will bear me witness how we will still draw their attention to the fact that, look, what you did was wrong. If you have taken to that lifestyle, to that attitude, to desecrate our constitution, to assume a responsibility that the constitution has not given you, how do you think that I, as the president, will be encouraged to continue to interact with you? when you are clearly in violation of the provision of the Constitution. Colleagues, 
I came with the idea that let us all go out and look for money for the association. Of course, within the ambit of what we were allowed to do. In, in March this year, I got KB State to sponsor NEC. Attorney General said he would sponsor, and I got support from the KB State government. They paid all our fees. After, yes, they paid everything, 100%. The Attorney General paid. So the NEC we had in KB was at no cost to the Nigerian Bar Association. Not a dime of your money did we use for that NEC. The records are there. After NEC, I received an additional 50 million naira. None of them knew. But my God Almighty knew that I got 50 million naira for the purposes of NEC. A friend to the Attorney General, whom the Attorney General had told that he should come and support us, came through after NEC. All expenses had been paid, except payments that I made from my own office account for air tickets with Max Air. If you recall, we had problem with Asman, we had to move to Max. I paid from my office 6.5 or 6 million naira for air tickets. I also paid another 3. Point about 4 million naira or thereabout. The, the receipts are there for payment for flights for national officers and our secretariat staff that went for that debt coming to about 10 million naira. That money was received in hard currency. I said to them, they gave us an equivalent of 50 million naira. I could have kept it. Nobody would have known. But what about God? Will I be able to sleep if I did that? I was carrying it in my bag. The GS came to my office. I brought out the money and showed him. I said, see the money they gave us. And that is because God has helped me to overcome the temptation with money. All of you know that money speaks. When you work with your colleague and payment is made, you begin to hear a voice. What did he do? Why should you give him that amount of money that you've agreed? You must be able to rise above that. Did I hear voices telling me that I should chop that money? Yes, I did. Did I need that 50 million naira at that time? Yes, I did. I can tell you some of the things that I plan to do with the money. But I chose to follow my heart instead of my head. I told them. I gave. I told him. I paid the equivalent of that 50 million naira less the 10 million for the air tickets. And we took that decision at our national executive committee meeting for me to take to pay the money into the net account less 10 million naira. I paid 40 million naira into that account. And then, when we had the SLP conference, and also the last net meeting, National Executive Committee meeting, I stepped out for a while, I came back, the first vice presided over that meeting, and I came, they had passed a resolution that they would share that, the, the 40 million. No, no, I said no. <laughs> no. I said, okay, so do a memo now, and tell me why that money should be shared. I refused. Gentlemen, as I speak to you, the last NEC meeting that we had, this last pre-agency NEC meeting, all expenses, all expenses were paid from that account. So this last NEC meeting was at no cost to the Nigerian Bar Association. I didn't have to take your money to do that. These are my offenses. The treasurer talked about 10%. The chairman are all here. We had issues with our IT consultant, and I explained this during the last net meeting. That was why we couldn't pay 10% due to the branches from payments of bar participation. Because he held back the data, the information. So we have all the details of those who paid bar practicing fees, but we cannot allocate branches to them because that data is with him. And I had to perform this obligation put on me by the Constitution. So I told our IT consultants and the accounts department, how do we go about doing this? Because we have to pay the 10%, even though we don't have this. So they decided to go back, and they advised we go back to the payment made last year. Let's look at the percentage of payment of bar practicing fee per branches. So we discovered that even though more people paid last year, understandably so, because it was election year, but we got more money this year. So I said, give me 10% for each branch in accordance with the percentage of the payment for last year. And on that basis, I met with the chairman and I explained to them, I apologized to them, that this is the only reason why we did not pay your bar practicing fee 
when you should have gotten this payment. So, but this is what we have done because you are already aware that we have issues with this data. So, we went ahead and except for Abuja branch because as at last year, Garki branch and Karu branch were not created. So, everything is lumped together. So, I said, except for this branch, we will pay for all those branches in accordance to the percentage of payment last year. The treasurer has a responsibility of mobilizing people to pay under the constitution. She read her duties under the constitution. Did she appreciate the fact that the branches should have their 10%? Not one day did the treasurer say, Mr. President, how about the 10%? We took the decision and I paid the branches. Now, at the last next meeting, the issue came up. And she said, I said that I did not need the treasurer to carry out any financial activity of the branch. I never said so. What did I say? I said, show me in the constitution where I will need your permission to pay 10% remittance to branches. The constitution is here. I don't need the permission of the treasurer to remit 10%. It's the constitutional duty. I have performed it. And I said, please, if there is anything I've done under the constitution that is wrong, let me see. She didn't say anything, but I knew by the help of the Holy Spirit that she would come and make a complaint today about this particular issue. And with respect to the issue of payment, the issue of payment is very clear in the Constitution. It says that payment can be done by me, the Secretary, and or the Treasurer. The provisions are there. We are lawyers. I had never made any payment without him. And when he was away, she came and she was the only person that was recommending payments to me. And I paid. So I cannot understand how our colleagues will come here and speak in the manner that they did just to put me at odds. Distinguished colleagues, I have a commitment to all of you. I am not going to allow anybody here to make me breach that oath. It's all about money. And I will say, when we went campaigning to them, and we were telling them that this is selfless service. I didn't know that you were targeting the bar practicing fee. Yes. Bar practicing fee. That's what you are targeting. Why will you tell me to come and be spending money like that?